let's move on to the next topic which is automation I have avoided talking about automation until now I've been putting it back and putting it back it wasn't really a good idea to talk about automation and up until now because if you don't understand what's going on behind the automation and what it's actually doing it can it can come to depend on it and if something goes and breaks or it doesn't work properly with automation well then you would know how to fix it so let's have a look at some basic autom automation I'll go through the the age-old process that I've been doing in almost every video until now add a line constrain the direction constrain two points on attach a line to that as well let's do that with automation now instead I'm going to add a line sketch a presentation graphic having convert to constructions checked I'm going to uncheck that now and add a directional constraint and accept and now you can see quite a lot has happened here as it would have previously let's let's note what has happened what has it done it has added a construction behind the presentation graphic it has added the directional constraint has added the two points to define a leg the line segment added two point on constraints which is probably two steps for us if we're doing it manually and it has attached the presentation graphic quite a lot of work going on there all automatically all with one click and an accept so nothing wrong with that at all quite neat but now we know exactly what what's going on behind the scenes and we understand what it has done for us so let's take um, a look at some more automation that we can do with dimension driven design in microstation I'm going to look at the last tool palette here that we haven't taken out yet and this is profile there's two icons in this one sketch profile and convert element to profile if you open up now you might have they may, may look like that so we'll extend the options at the bottom here and you can see both tools have this this area at the bottom and this is called the constraints tutor and what this does is it tries to make a best guess at what constraints you would like to apply so you have some options you can turn on and off let's look at an example of that straight away let's use the convert element to profile and I'm going to draw out a block that will be my profile I'm going to say convert element to profile and the constraints tutor wants to know what kind of constraints you may want to use on that block well, I'm going to want location because I like a fixed location I'm going to fix angles because I want I don't want the block to be rotatable I want it to be to remain as as it's drawn horizontal and vertical I know I'm going to need some perpendicular and some parallel constraints and let's try it at that click and accept and it's done a whole lot of work there for us straight away let's modify and resolve and test it that looks fine one thing it has done here that I, w I, I wouldn't like if I was doing it manually I wouldn't do it this way I would instead of having two point on constraints for both of these lines for the point on the corner I'd prefer a point at intersection let's continue here I actually know there's going to be a problem here you see there's a problem those, those constraints aren't working out properly 
they're not together at all. In order to fix those, we'd need to say put that point on that line, on that point, on that line, and that would improve it slightly. And I can tell you, I knew that problem was going to happen. I just wanted it there to highlight what might happen. I'm going to delete that and do it again. And this time, I'm going to make sure the unify constraint is applied. And now that problem has gone away. And that's fine now. Again, <coughs> it has chosen to put point on constraints there, but there's nothing I can do about that at the moment. Another thing to do, let's undo all that again, or delete it. Another thing to look at here is these confirm options on the right hand side. Let's turn all of those on and select the element and accept again. And now before it has done everything for me, it's going to give me a series of dialog boxes asking me to confirm whether I want these constructions added. And the first thing it has done here is unifies these two frames. And we saw that was a problem the first time I done it, and that's exactly what I want fixed, so that's fine. Let's unify those. Add a parallel constraint. It's highlighting it here, the two lines and the parallel constraint. And yes, we want that. Again, for the vertical lines, yes, we want that. Perpendicular constraint, yes, I want that. Fixed angle, yes. I, if I'm doing it manually, I may have done it somewhere else, but that's going to be fine. And a location constraint, a fixed constraint at the, on the point at the bottom left corner. Yep, I want that too. So it's asked us to confirm as we go along, which is another nice way of doing it, and it gives us a little bit more control and puts a little bit more thought into the process. But again, I would urge anyone who's using this, um, these automation tools to always test afterwards, because you may not get what you expect. And if you use them and then advance your design without testing them and come back and find there's something wrong, it can, it can waste a lot of work and waste a lot of time. So that's the convert element to profile. We have another tool here called Sketch Profile. Again, we have the constraints shooter at the bottom. I'm going to turn off confirm here for all of these. And I'm just going to sketch a block. And once again, it has done everything we, that we have we would expect in much the same manner but we have some live options as we work if we use the sketch tool we can add arcs as we're working let's just turn all of these on and see what it comes up with go back to a line here and this time I'll change the vertex to rounded and you get automatically asked if you want to put a radius in there what radius you would like and if you would like to put that geometric constraint in so let's put in a radius of 10 and that's been added for us maybe we do a chamfer on this corner You can see there there's a problem. Maybe I don't want to put a chamfer on that corner, but it's automatically adding it for us, whether we want it or not. So we're going to put it in. Good job. Let's put tangent constraints on there, directional constraints on those lines, a fixed point down here. Let's modify and resolve and test it and see how well it works. That's fine. All we would need to fully resolve this design would be some dimensions and it would be in, in good nick. And it hasn't done everything perfectly. There's a lot of things I would I would do slightly different information. Maybe that's not the best location for a, a fixed point geometry. I'd probably prefer to have that down here. 